As we gear up for another winter, our thoughts turn to the cold, scraping the windshield, shoveling snow, and layers and layers of warm clothing. After all that, though, we can look forward to coming in and warming ourselves to a nice hot cup of soup. This is All Request History. If you've ever been curious about the history of, well, anything, you're in the right place. Subscribe here, put your request in the comments, and you could be on the next episode of All Request History. Thanks this time to at Fee Astray for requesting the history of Campbell Soup. The Campbell Soup Company has not always been one of the largest processed food companies in the world like it is today. It started in 1869 by Joseph A. Campbell in Bridgeton, New Jersey. He and his business partner, Abraham Anderson, started a food business that canned and preserved fruits, tomatoes, jellies, condiments, and even minced meats. They called it Anderson and Campbell. In 1876, Anderson left the company and Campbell bought out his half to become the full owner and renamed it Joseph Campbell Preserve Company. By 1892, Campbell's son-in-law, nephew, and family friend Arthur Dorrance joined the company. Now, Dorrance was an amazing asset. He had two college degrees in chemistry, one from MIT and one from Gottingen University in Germany. He developed a game-changing process for the Campbell Company. In 1897, Dorrance introduced his discovery called condensing. It's a formula that removes most of the water from the canning process and leaves most all of the heavy ingredients intact. This changed the soup industry as a whole as consumers could now just add water and enjoy fresh hot soup right out of the can. Dorrance went on to become the CEO of Campbell's from 1914 to 1930. After the success of the condensed canned market, Campbell's focused their efforts primarily on their soups. Their biggest seller featured homegrown New Jersey beefsteak tomatoes, and they called it Campbell's Beefsteak Tomato Soup. In 1898, a Campbell's executive named Herbert Williams was attending a college football game at Cornell University in Ithaca, New York. He was so impressed by the bright, crisp colors on the home team's uniforms that he chose that color to design the soup can labels. In case you're not a big college ball fan, Cornell's football team is called Big Red, and their uniforms are quite red. He also used the classic signature of Joseph A. Campbell as the script on the now familiar label. In 1900, Campbell's introduced several of their soups at the World's Fair in Paris and won a medal of excellence in processed food. The company added the likeness of the medal on the label, of their award-winning cans of soup. Under the label were the words Exposition Universal Internationale. Years later, they changed these words to more of an English translation to Paris International Exposition. This change has been the only change in the soup label, and to this day, it remains the same. In 1916, Campbell's Soup, already a very popular choice, got even a bigger boost with its release of the cookbook Help for the Hostess. It included several recipes using condensed soup and specifically one you might have just had recently, Campbell's Green Bean Casserole. By 1922, their line was so popular that they added the word soup to its company's name, Campbell's Soup Company. Other Campbell's Soup milestones, in 1913, they introduced cream of celery to the condensed line. In 1934, cream of mushroom and chicken noodle hit the shelves. In 1948, Campbell's acquired the V8 company. In 1950, the company gets into TV and fully sponsors shows like Lassie and Peter Pan. In 1962, the famous red label showing the winning medal becomes a pop star. Artist Andy Warhol created the famous art piece featuring the Campbell Soup label. The tomato soup label is probably the most well-known image, but in total, he created 32 works of art using Campbell's likeness. Initially, the company planned on suing Warhol for using the labels without permission, which he didn't legally have, but by 1964, the Warhol paintings created so much fame for the brand that Campbell's ended up dropping the lawsuit and even sending the artist cases and cases of tomato soup. A quick fun fact, one of Warhol's 
Campbell Soup label paintings sold in 2006 for $11.8 million. So yeah, he got a little bit more than just some free cases of soup. During the 60s and 70s, Campbell's went on to become one of the largest food companies in the world. They purchased other food makers like Pepperidge Farms, Prego Spaghetti Sauce, Godiva Chocolates, and even Swanson. They continued to innovate and develop new varieties and introduce new flavors, with a total of over 200 varieties over the years. Not all of them were hits. Here's a short list of some discontinued Campbell's soups. Pepper Pot Soup Chunky Philly Cheese Steak Scotch Broth Green Pea Honestly, does anybody really eat this? And even a failed attempt at K-cup single-serve soups. I would imagine that the soup ended up having a hint of coffee taste, or that your coffee may have ended up having a hint of soup taste. Marketing has always been a priority at Campbell's. Here's a few from over the years. You might recognize a few of these classic ad campaigns. Add zest to appetite. Almost a meal in itself. Everybody needs soup. Give your child more milk. One a day, every day. Soup is good food. Campbell up. And I'm sure you remember the Campbell's kids. Yeah, Campbell's kids have their mugs on mugs. How do you handle a hungry man? The manhandlers. And that's what Campbell's soup is. Mmm, mmm, good. And Campbell's was one of the first companies to feature a same-sex couple in a TV ad in a 2015 commercial showing Cooper's two dads imitating Darth Vader while eating Star Wars soup. Now, the New Jersey location has changed after many years. Throughout the 80s and 90s, the original plant in New Jersey moved to Ohio, but the world headquarters is still in Camden, New Jersey. Keeping up with the times during the 80s and 90s, they introduced low-fat and lower-sodium recipes, but they also added the chunky-style soups, usually featuring football players in the chunky ads. This style became one of their most popular lines. Between 2004 and 2017, they sold $450 million worth of chunky soups. Campbell's even trademarked the name Chunky and is now the only manufacturer of soup that can use the word chunky. Campbell's has not been free of a few controversies. In 2007, they were awarded the Certificate of Excellence for its efforts in reducing sodium, but a few years later, a California ABC News affiliate investigated its claims of 25% lower sodium, sold at a higher price, and they discovered it was actually higher in sodium than their regular soup. Now, Campbell's claimed that the label listed in the fine print that it was really 25% less than their condensed soups only. They did, however, to avoid negative press, settle the lawsuit out of court, and they paid $173,000. In 2021, Campbell's was under fire again against claims that the brand called Plum had produced a baby food containing dangerous levels of metal toxins. The case was dismissed due to lack of evidence by the plaintiff, so there's no cause for alarm here, parents. In fact, Campbell's is doing just fine. The 2024 fiscal year profit margins are expected to be up 24% and end up at $517 million for the year, according to the current CEO, Mark A. Klaus. So, if it's winter and it's getting colder and you've been outdoors for a while, yeah, it's time to settle in, get warm, and just like Travis and Jason Kelsey would do, let's enjoy a nice hot bowl of soup that eats like a meal. Mmm, mmm, good. Well, thanks for checking in. Are you curious? Subscribe here, put your request in the comments, and you could be on the next All Request History.